Scholars, welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra. So right here in this channel, we'll be tackling the jump pass question for the subject literature in English year 2016. So don't go anywhere, stay with us because we'll be right back. My school channel right now we'll be tackling question 21 to 49 now let's begin with question 21 the tone of the personnel in Blake's the school boy is that of option a fear option B fulfillment option C contempt option D neutrality now the answer to this question is option a fear now this poem talks about a boy who enjoys or loves the side of nature and he loves the sounds of the birds. They are pleasant in his, in his ear and he doesn't want this excitement to stop. However, he spends the whole day in despair under the presence of a cruel teacher. So this is basically fear. Fear is being afraid. When we talk about fulfillment, fulfillment comes with um, happiness. Contempt comes with being angry or it comes with disgust. And when we talk about neutrality, it comes with being impartial or unbiased. So the answer to this question is option A, fear. Question 22. I waited in ambush. Ambush in the line above from Adelti's ambush symbolizes option A, exploit, option B, frustration, option C, danger, option D, pain. Now, the answer to this question is option C, danger. Do not forget that this is a line in the last stanza of the poem, and the poem generally is about the social and political problem facing Nigeria, uh, ranging from corruption to embezzlement of funds. Now, in this last stanza, what the poet is trying to say is it, it looks forward to a new generation that will pull them out from this hopeless state. However, the poet is scared. He's afraid that the ruling class will not stop being greedy, will not stop embezzling public funds and all of that. So option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 23. And by us stood that image of the king in rich apparel, crown and signet ring. The image in the lines above in Maurice, the proud king, is option A, auditory, option B, gustatory, option C, tactile, option D, visual. The answer to this question is option D, visual. And visual means able to be seen. Okay, when we talk about auditory, auditory is the sense of hearing, gustatory is the sense of taste, tactile is the sense of touch. Now, when you look at this exact, you see that it appeals to the eyes, okay? That is what we can see and relate to with our eyes. So, option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 24. But such a tide as moving seems to sleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. The rhyme scheme in the exit above from Tennyson crossing the bar is... Option A, A, B, A, C, option B, A, B, B, A, option C, A, B, A, B, option D, A, B, C, B. Now, the answer to this question is option C, A, B, A, B. Now, let's look at this together. When we look at the rhyming scheme in a poem, we look at the last word in each line. So, we have line 1, line 2, line 3, and line 4. But in actual sense, the poem is... A 16 line poem and this is line 5 line 6 line 7 line 8 okay the poem has four stanza and this is the second stanza that has been extracted for this question now the last word in this line is asleep okay and the last sound is p. so we look at the last sound in rhyme is kim p and the last sound here is m foam m and the last sound here is p which is similar to this and the last sound here is mm, which is similar to the, the second line. So we have A, B, A, because it's similar to this, then B, because this is similar to this. So that's why our answer is A, B, A, B. Now, when you look at the poem, uh, the first stanza all has a rhyming scheme A, B, A, B. So option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 25. 
One of the themes of Awonos, the Anvil and the AMA is option A, education, option B, slavery, option C, colonization, option D, corruption. The answer to this question is option C, colonization. Now, this poem is a poem that addresses Africans, Africans who have neglected their culture because of the exposure to the Western culture. Now, it tells them to go back to their roots, to trace back their roots and embrace the African culture. So from what I've explained, colonization is the closest to this. So option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 26. And my blood ripples, turns torrent. The line above in Okara's piano and drums depicts the personal as option A, smart, option B, sick, option C, weak, option D, strong. Now the answer to this question is option C, weak. When you look at this poem, this line is actually the first line of the second stanza. Now, the last line of the first stanza talks about a hunter with a spear ready to strike an hunt. Then it is introduced by, and my blood ripples. That is the next line, which is the first line of the second stanza. My blood ripples, stone stirring. Now, this describes someone who is weak. Now, the first stanza talks about an imagery of Africans' agility, strength, and quickness to action, which causes want to be weak okay so the answer to this question is c weak question 27 according to peter's the panic of growing older at 20 a man is option a poor option b religious option c hopeful option d frustrated the answer to this question is hopeful now the poem states as i quote at 20 stilled by hope of gigantic success so the answer therefore is option c hopeful question 28 the dominant literary device in Diop's vanity is option A, rhetorical question, option B, allusion, option C, hyperbole, option D, dramatic irony. Now, the answer to this question is rhetorical question. If you've read this poem, you'll see that or notice that rhetorical questions are used in the poem. Now, rhetorical questions are questions that you ask to make a point rather than get an answer. Okay, so what, is, what point is the writer trying to make in this text? The writer uses rhetorical question to show us how worried or to show us the troubled state in which the writer is as regards the status quo of African society. There's a neglect and rejection of African tradition and um, overdependence on the Western culture. So the answer to this question is option A, rhetorical question. Question 29. Alowell's The Dining Table can be referred to as a traditional poem, option B, a lyric, option C, dramatic monologue, option D, ballad. The answer to this question is dramatic monologue. What does this mean? Dramatic monologue means self-conversation, that is, conversing with yourself. Okay, so the first line of the poem states, as I quote, dinner tonight comes with gun wounds. So the answer to this question is option C, dramatic monologue. Do not forget to take practice questions with our simulated JanCBT pass questions. All you need to do is you can click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the My School website. There you can download My School Mobile app for your Android phones or My School software for your computers and laptops. Please go ahead and download and start practicing these questions for your upcoming examination. Now, moving on to question 30. In a tragic play, the device used to reduce tension is known as Option A, comic relief. Option B, rhetoric. Option C, anticlimax. Option D, climax. Now, the answer to this question is comic relief. Comic relief is used to relieve tension. It is an amusing scene. Okay, so option A is the correct answer to this question. However, rhetoric means effective writing or speaking. Anticlimax is a disappointing hand. Option D, climax is the interesting part in the story. Okay, so option a is the correct answer to this question. If you're enjoying this content, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 31. An art that is both literary and theoretical is option A, a prose, option B, a poem, option C, drama, option D, prosody. Now, the answer to this question is drama. So, drama applies to literary um, and theoretical um, futures. When we talk about literary, we're talking about, it simply means written, published, or printed. Theoretical means play out from the word theater. 
So the answer to this question is option C because drama has to do with a play acted on stage. Okay, it could be in a written form, and but then it can be acted on stage. So option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 32. An action in a play that stimulates the audience to pity a character is option A, pathos, option B, parody, option C, pyrrhic, option D, props. Now the answer to this question is pathos, option A. Pathos is designed to inspire emotions from the readers, while parody is designed to imitate or make fun of its subjects. Pyrrhic relates to a victory, props are objects found um, on the stage play or in a theatre. So option A, pathos, is the answer to this question. Question 33. A literary work that teaches moral is said to be option A, didactic, option B, instructive, option C, corrective, option D, impressive. The answer to this question is didactic. Didactic is meant to teach moral lessons. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Question 34. The opposite of the part that introduces the main work in literature is known as option A, prologue, option B, epitome, option C, epilogue, option D, epitaph. Now the answer to this question is epilogue. Epilogue is the concluding part or the conclusion of what has happened. Epilogue is also the opposite of prologue. Now what is prologue? Prologue is the introductory part. It's the part that introduces the main work. Okay, so epilogue is the answer to this question. However, epitome is a person or a thing that is a perfect example of a quality. Epitaph are words written in memory of someone or it's usually inscribed on some stones so option c is the correct answer to this very question question 35 the continuation of meaning without pause from one line to the next is option a synecdoche option b melodrama option c enjambment option d alliteration now the answer to this question is enjambment so enjambment is a continuation of a sentence without a pause beyond the end of a line. So in poems, you have line one not making sense or not making meaning until you've read till maybe line two or three. So the sentence is not complete until you get to line three. So it makes complete sense. That is enjambment. It's also called run on line. Okay, so synodoc is a part used to represent a world and vice versa. Melodrama is a drama piece with um, exaggerated characters and exciting events. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds. So the answer to this question is enjambment, option C. Question 36. A paragraph in prose is equivalent to a option A verse in poetry, option B stanza in poetry, option C meter in poetry, option D troop in poetry. The answer to this question is stanza in poetry. However, it is more appropriate to use verse in songs. Sometimes people try to refer to stanza as verse or they use it interchangeably But then the correct diction in poetry is stanza Okay, stanza is used in poem and it is synonymous to a paragraph in um, prose or in drama or in English language generally So stanza is equivalent to a paragraph When we talk about meter in poetry, it has to do with the number of syllables or the pattern of emphasis of those um, syllables When we talk about true in poetry we are looking at figures of thought or rather figures of speech in literature. So the answer to this question is option B, stanza in poetry. Question 37. What sustains the interest of a reader in all literature is option A, ambiguity, option B, characterization, option C, suspense, option D, plot. Now the answer to this question is suspense. Suspense is the state of uncertainty okay when you are eager you don't know what's going to happen next that is suspense okay so option c is the correct answer to this question because it sustains the interest of a reader ambiguity is open to different interpretation when i say man the door i mean secure the door when i say uh, be my man i mean be my um husband so or when i say the man is going i'm talking about a male personality and all of that so open to different interpretation when we talk about characterization characterization is the way a writer has portrayed his character the behavioral pattern attached to a particular character so when we talk about plot plot is the chronological order or arrangement of a story so option c is the correct answer to this question 
Question 38. Satire employs the use of option A, onomatopoeia, option B, irony, option C, synodoki, option D, melancholy. The answer to this question is option B, irony. But first, what is satire? Satire simply criticizes. It criticizes anything what's mocked or ridiculed. Okay, so option B is the correct answer to this question because irony has to do with saying the opposite of what you truly mean. Okay, so satire uses a large dose of sarcasm and irony. Onomatopoeia relates to sound. Synodoki is a part that is used to represent or oh, oh, melancholy simply means sad. Okay, so option B, irony is the correct answer to this question. Question 39. The speech made by a character to himself on stage is option A, epilogue, option B, aside, option C, soliloquy, option B, monologue. Now, the answer to this question is soliloquy. Soliloquy is a speech made by a character to himself. Aside is a speech made by a character to the audience. Okay, monologue is a long speech made by an actor in a play or in a film. So, the answer to this question is option C, soliloquy. Are there questions you would like to ask? You can go ahead and ask your questions by using the link provided in the description below. Please click on this link. It takes you to the My School website there. You can ask as many questions as possible and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now moving on to question 14. Women as a clam on the sea's crescent. I saw your jealous eyes quench the sea's fluorescence dance on the pause in seasons. Wally showing cars night. The line above suggests that women are option A, conversious, option B, dogmatic, option C, seers, option D, magicians. Now, the answer to this question is option A, conversious. Conversious is the desire to possess something that belongs to someone else. Okay, so in this poem, the writer compares knights and women. The writer suggests that women are jealous, and so he says knights is as jealous as women. So the light is jealous of light and it tries as much as possible to outshine brightness by bringing in complete darkness. So this is what the line is trying to say. So from my description or explanation, we see that option A, conversious, is the best answer to this question. Dogmatic is the set of, set of principles laid down by authority, seers, people that um, see the future or that can see people's thoughts, read through people's thoughts magicians as the word implies so the answer to this question um, in summary is option a conversions do you have other steps explanation or solutions to any of this question please feel free to use the comment section below indicate the question as well as the solutions you would like to share question 41 fight by the book of arithmetic the figure of speech in the line above is option a hyperbole option b euphemism option c little t's option d innuendo the answer to this question is innuendo. Now, what does innuendo mean? It is a remark that suggests something but does not refer to that thing directly. Now, fight by the book of arithmetic, what does this mean? It means fight by expertise or fight by mastery. Now, it's not referring to the word mastery or expertise, but then it uses book of arithmetic. So, we are indirectly referring to expertise or mastery. Okay, so option D is the correct answer to this question because it clearly defines what um, innuendo is. Now, option A, hyperbole, is the use of exaggeration. Option B, euphemism, is the use of a mild, mild expression to describe an unpleasant situation. Literacy is a form of understatement. So, option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 42. Weep not, child, weep not, my darling. With these kisses, let me remove your tears. The ravening clouds shall no longer be victorious, they shall no longer possess the sky. The speaker of the line is option A, optimistic, option B, carefree, option B, helpless, option D, pessimistic. The answer to this question is optimistic. Optimistic means to be hopeful and confident about the future. Now, when you look at line one and line two, we see that someone is trying to remove someone else from, from the state of despair. And then line 3 and line 4 tells us that something really bad is happening, but then the writer is assuring of um, a better future or a brighter future. Now, carefree means happiness and it goes beyond being happy. Option C, helpless, not to have help. To feel helpless is to be without help. Pessimistic is seeing the worst aspects of um, things. Okay, so the answer to this question is option A, optimistic. 
question 43 this thing you are doing is too heavy for you he said i went to school only a little but i have killed many more years in this world than you have g okara the voice it can be inferred from the passage above that the option a listener is wise option b speaker is a potter option c listener is more experienced option d speaker is more experienced now the answer to this question is option d speaker is more experienced we can hear a voice the speaker here saying i have killed many more years in this world than you have so this tells us that the speaker is more experienced than the listener so option d is the correct answer to this question question 44 oh incomprehensible god shall my pilot be my inborn stars to that final call to d literary device used in the first line is option a apostrophe option b rolex option c rhetoric question option d passion the answer to this question is apostrophe now what does apostrophe mean it means to address or speak to an object directly or an idea or something that is not um, visible okay so uh, all incomprehensible god now god is someone that is not visible and so it is apostrophe bollocks is a comical imitation so the answer to this question is option a apostrophe question 45 I have set too much under it out of stone and laid my honor to on cherry on it. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a strong potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. William Shakespeare, 12th night. A heart of stone in the lines above is an example of option A, litotis, option B, metonymy, option C, assonance, option D, metaphor. The answer to this question is metaphor. Metaphor is a comparison between two things. So out of stone, an art is compared with a stone, and out of stone means unfriendly or um, unkind or artless. Okay, so option D is the correct answer to this question. Do not forget that litotis is a form of understatement. Metonymy is referring to something closely associated with that thing. Assonance is a representation of vowel sounds. So the answer to this question is metaphor. Question 46. No, no. Do not blame the gods. Let no one blame the powers. My people, learn from my fall. The powers would have failed if I did not let them use me. They knew my weakness. The weakness of a man easily moved to the defense of his tribe against others. Allah wrote to me the gods and not to blame. The speaker in the passage is option A, reckless, option B, insane, option C, a coward, option D, a hero. Now the answer to this question is a hero. And this statement was made by Odewale, who is destined to, to kill his father and marry his mother. Now in this exact we see that he accepts his weakness, he does not fault the God, and he tells the subject to learn from his mistake. Now, this is an attribute of a hero, a brave man. So, option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 47. It says, the medicine gods are filthy, the herb are drunk from unhygienic cups, or quote P, Bitek, Song of Lavinu. The point in the lines is saying that, the speaker is very hygienic, option B. The person referred to takes Western medicine, option C. Arbor medicine is dangerous, option D. The speaker prefers Western medicine. The answer to this question is option C. Arbor medicine is dangerous. And we can find this in um, lines 2 and 3 and 4, rather. The medicine guards are, are filthy, that is, they are disgusting and dirty. And on hygienic cup, they are drunk from unhygienic cup, which means the cups are not clean, they are not neat, and all of this tells us that they are dangerous to the elves. So about medicine is dangerous. The answer to this question is option C. Question 48. It is a faithful liar. The line above is an example of option A, epigram, option B, oxymoron, option C, euphemism, option D, antithesis. Now, the answer to this question is oxymoron. Oxymoron is simply placing side by side two contradictory words. And it, as, as you can see in the exact or this expression provided, he is a faithful liar. Faithful means someone who is true to his words. Liar, someone who tells lies. So the words are opposites in meaning. So option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 49. I wonder how long you often parasites shall share with me this little bed and awake me from my sweet 
dreams be lost by sucking blood for my poor head. Mbure to a bed bug. The most dominant figure of speech in the exact is a metaphor B simile C personification the hyperbole. The answer to this question is personification, and personification is giving the attributes of a human being to an abstract idea or object. So as you can see in this exact, we see that parasite is giving the attributes of a human being, which is sharing the bed with a person and waking the person from his sweet dreams by sucking the blood. So option. C is the correct answer to this question. We've come to the end of this wonderful segment and I believe you enjoyed every bit of this. Please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.